Hey guys, what's up? McLean here. Welcome back to Solo Cup Stories, an ongoing series on McLean vlogs where I get together with friends, have a couple of drinks, and tell stories. This is episode five, part two. Behind the camera, we have Izzy Mansky. At the bar, we have Andrew Harris. My special guest is Lexus. And I am your host, McLean. Previously on Solo Cup Stories Episode 5 Part 1, we ended on a very dramatic, unfinished story. We thought there were two parts, but apparently there were three. So let's see what happens next in this very dramatic tale. Okay, there are three parts. This is the last and final one. They agree to get us an Uber because they fully understand he will get arrested, obviously. Right. Like, why would you be Drinking out Drinking and driving. Right? But instead of just getting one Uber straight to their house, they insisted I tell them my address because they wanted me to go straight home first. Um, which didn't make sense because his house was closest to the suburb we were in at that time. I gave them my neighbor's address smart yeah and we're on our way we're in the car and at this point i'm completely humiliated and just in complete disbelief i start to ask stupid sam in the back of the car you know you understood all of these things before we got here so why did you do this to me why did you choose to humiliate me in front of your family and all of the strangers why from how he reacted you can tell he is not used to this kind of confrontation mm. me trying to give him a real life ultimatum made him upset to which he turns to me and says, N word, shut the up. Now note, the driver was a woman of color as well. At this point, we both made eye contact and confusion. Obviously, I said, repeat yourself. And he did. Before he could finish the word, I punched him in the face. Good. So I am fighting him in the back of the Uber and I'm winning. Mm. The driver stops the car and threatens to put both of us out in the middle of nowhere if we didn't stop fighting. Before I could even stop throwing punches, he landed a good punch square in the the middle of my face and broke my glasses. I got a cut on my face and my glasses were karate chopped in half. At this point, I'm in the back of this woman's car bawling my soul away and just completely embarrassed. We pull up to my house and he walks me to my door. Ew. He proceeds to pull $11 out of his wallet because that is <laughs> all. He proceeds to pull eleven dollars. He proceeds to pull eleven dollars. He proceeds to pull eleven dollars out of his wallet. Keep saying it because it's just keep blowing me every single time. Because that is all he has in cash and gives me a hug. Don't touch me. And says, I'm super sorry. I'll give you some more money tomorrow. I love you. Obviously, I did not love him. He was just drunk. We barely knew each other. I mean, that was what I'm assuming the whole night was supposed to be for to get to know all each right. other. Uh, so to wrap this shit up because the story is super long, I found out that the same app I met him on months earlier, he was still using. Mm -hmm. I discovered that he would message hundreds of women of color every day saying the same cheesy line or switching the line up so that it's subtle. And from all of this, I realized never date down, always date up ladies and men too. In the end, it was never really worth it. Right. Let's unpack for a little bit. The only reason why I like this story is because we really don't hear a lot of situations like this. No. Not that there should be situations <laughs> like this, but to know that like the dating scene exists and that crazy stuff like this can happen. You know what though? Mm -hmm. It is very unfortunate because it happens. And right. I think it happens way more than we think it does. Than we think it does, right. That is disgusting and I'm really so sorry that, that that has happened to you, but I really hope that you took this as a learning experience because yeah. people like that, they will not change. Right. So all in all, it's like the Never. two top things that we got from the story is you definitely need to be able to identify any kind of toxicity early in a relationship so that you're not wasting years of having to experience something that could have been definitely avoided. Yeah. Look out for yourself. The second thing is this constant debate about the n-word, who can say it, who shouldn't, the audacity that exists, that's what's problematic. It's like brace yourself within this right. whole relationship journey. Yes, it's something that certain people want so you bad, the bullet. but at the cost of what, right? right. So let, let's let this fly yeah. because it's a lesson. Let's refresh. Let's move on to black girl magic 
And I'm not just talking about us, but I'm talking about this drink. Black Girl Magic is a wine owned by a black wine collection, owned by black women, the McBride sisters. So if you want to know more about them, hit the link in the description below. I feel like that needed spear fingers. Right? Like buy it. Yes, 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 yes. This will be our first solo cup drink. And then our second solo cup drink is the go-to bubbly barefoot. That way it's just easier to drink. It's sweeter. Let's taste this black girl. A magic, yes. Into awesome. oh, <laughs> I'm drinking this for the culture. To be honest, you know, rose has so many different styles and like tastes when it comes to the brand. Like I could see myself like watching a movie, drinking this, and eating popcorn. So this is really nice. Like I am definitely giving this a seven out of ten because yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's once every other better month. than like your cheapy like wine. I yeah. like it. Let's talk about black magic more when it comes to our female black community. I would like to share this book called Beyond Beautiful, Volume, volume two. 2. One of my really good friends, who I call a cousin because that's how close we are, is a co-author where she has a chapter in this book talking about her experience as a black female. It's all about mental health, it's all about self-care. So if you are into that, you should definitely buy this. This is very unique because there are 13 co-authors and oh, they I love all, that. right? So they it's like all, short stories. Kinda. Yes, they're all POC and mm -hmm. they all have a chapter introducing themselves as a way for you to get to know the author of each chapter. Oh, it's that. super diverse. So yes, go through daily affirmations. This book is amazing. Volume one is also available. So go check this out. A lot of black girl magic up in this book. The link is in the description below. Uh, let's move on to the rest of our stories. So um, our next prompt is by Dianco101 Ooh, okay. on Instagram. This is Valentine's Day related. Well, it's kind of amazing how I found my everything, me. I'm my everything right now because self-love. I already love it. I'm here for it. I think it's so important before you get into any relationship that you love yourself first. No one is gonna love you more than you. I definitely think it's important to love yourself more than your partner does. And I will always say that. How do you celebrate self-love? I think that it just really comes down to like, if I'm feeling stressed or I'm feeling overwhelmed, that I definitely think it's self-care, right? Mm -hmm. Self-care is self-love, you know? Doing even like little things for yourself, like getting up and doing your hair, putting on your makeup for the day. I think that that that's showing self-appreciation and mm. you know it's getting nice and ready and dialed up for no one else but you right is showing self-love making care you of yourself. your number one yes right? i absolutely I like that. think that this is important i'm gonna let it fly because yes. i love it let's let oh self-love baby hey, right. eat it right. take it i celebrate self-love by remembering that i can take time for myself because we all have like so many busy lives that like sometimes we just forget like hey, you can have a day for yourself. It's not about being selfish yeah. in a mean way. It's about being selfish in a healthiest way. Yeah. So like I celebrate self-love by like taking baths, by taking a walk by myself, this by really being hard by myself me. just yeah. to refresh. I like the concept of self-care because it's a way to re-energize yeah. and recenter your soul, Absolutely. your nirvana. Your taking care passion. of yourself inside uh, and out, you yeah. know? My answer to what self care and self-love look Bible. like is this book because yes. there's just so many paths of life that you can learn multiple females who are successful who are and diverse in like age diverse in experience that you I anybody can learn from anybody this. right like right so check this out link is in the description below if you want to check it out go ahead and purchase it this is what self-love looks like if you like this video so far make sure to hit that like button share this video Sub and subscribe to mclean vlog so that you can see more fun content full of diversity you can learn listen laugh all my stuff, so go follow and sub to your favorite black creator, AKA moi, and her information will be in the description below as well. All right, so let's get into this next story. This is from Reddit, and the username is Riri Do You Love Me, and this is about commemorating Black History Month. 
I've always enjoyed it. We celebrate it like a more serious version of Juneteenth. My family usually gets together and celebrates our heritage and remembers our ancestors. This is the time when grandma and grandpa share stories of their childhood and what our family went through during slavery, the reconstruction era, and leading up to the civil rights era. Um, if it wasn't for COVID, we would be having our get togethers left and right. We would also meet up with other community members like neighbors from the Caribbean, Nigeria, or elsewhere, and spend time together fixing each other's cultural food, swapping clothing, teaching dances, and so on. During school, we had a black culture fair and it was very similar to an international fair. We just shared aspects of our culture and made a poster of an important black history figure to share with others. I like this. I it's like, love It's that. so wholesome because I know that like, first off, I do not believe in just celebrating black culture within the month of February. Yeah, no, it's yeah, celebrated every day. Not. Yes, yes, the month of February signifies it. <laughs> it brings back the attention, but this is something that you should be celebrating every day. Whatever culture you are, you should be celebrating it daily because it exists daily because it's a part of your being. But I like this because it's nice to know that people do have routines yeah. that they do when it comes to family reunions right. or just like being aware of their culture. So I'm definitely gonna let this one fly. Heck yeah. The part where um, the school was having the festival, I think that that is so important. I really wish mm. that I had that in school. I definitely would have prevented years of, you know, self hatred right. towards myself for being who I am but honestly I wouldn't want it any other way I am mm. so proud to be black today like Let I us. wouldn't want it any other black way magic. no <laughs> like I definitely appreciate myself so much more than I did when I was definitely growing up, but Good. that is so important. And I yes. definitely think that schools need to do that more. Yeah, it's just a process yeah. of growth. So comment below if you would like to hear more information about me, Lexis, Andrew, and Izzy in regards to how we have dealt with our cultures growing up. Yeah, We're all very diverse. And so if you wanna know how we can make a very specific video for you guys. Yes. Comment below if you want to hear more about that stuff. But let's move on to the next story. This is by you, Bob Rob the Third. In fifth grade, I didn't receive a single Valentine's Day card in my cubby hole while everyone else did. I hate wow. this one. I want to rip it only because it's mean, and I'm sorry that you had experiences. I used to get bullied. I have definitely spent many a Valentine's Day without any Valentines in my cubby hole. But you know what? I bet you bad today. I bet everyone <laughs> wants to put a Valentine in your cubby hole. Oh. Kids are mean. Kids are mean. They're Fifth rude. grade. They're that was disgusting. a that was a, a a hard I think time for yeah. all of us. We were awkward as heck probably. I know right. I was. Same. Um, I was just a kid trying to make friends, trying to have a life, and I didn't get any Valentines in my cubby hole. But. I get a lot of Valentine's on my cubby hole now. And by cubby hole, I mean the DM, baby. That's where everything goes down nowadays. But you know, it's all it's all about how you raise your children. Right. That's it. I mean, my my <laughs> aunt raised me to like never leave anybody out. Like if you send your kids to school with the Valentine's and you leave a child out, I blame the parents. You wait. I don't like it. <laughs> you really don't like it. So that no, was like, this is it's mean. Sad. This is mean. And I'm sorry that this still happens to people. Yeah. It shouldn't. I it's feel insane. like you're either gonna bring a Valentine for the whole class uh -huh. or you're not gonna bring a Valentine at right. all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look into our next story. This is a story submitted from a viewer. So a reminder, if you have stories that you would like to be shared on future episodes of SES, make sure to hit that link in the description below to submit your stories with a theme of any kind or a theme that matches the next episode. So remember to stay for the end of this video so that you know what that theme is for episode six of Solo Cup Stories. The title is When I Started Dating My Wife. Here we go. It was 1983, the beginning of my senior year in college, and she was a freshman at the same college. We first met at the summer orientation three months earlier when neither of us knew whether or not she would choose my college to attend. I invited her to my dorm room to watch The Godfather on TV, and throughout the movie, we barely spoke. After the movie, we sat in the dorm lounge and talked until about 4 a.m. I walked her to her dorm and she turned around and asked me if I would mind if she kissed me. And I said, no, I wouldn't mind. She gave me the best kiss that I ever had. It was a kiss where we both knew from that day forward, we would be dating. Two years later, we were married and went on to have three beautiful daughters during the next 32 years of a loving marriage. 
Wow. That is awesome. Three daughters. I'm uh, the third daughter. And this was a story from my father. I definitely <laughs> recognized it towards the ending because he's told this in so many different ways and obviously he made it short and concise. Yeah, let's celebrate black love. So cute, like awesome. So I'm gonna let my history fly. That was beautiful. <laughs> McLean's dad. I only hope someone loves me that much and says that I gave them the best kiss ever. Right. We'll see. I mean, I know I give the best kisses, but like to have someone say that to me, I'd probably like poop my pants. Like literally uh -huh. like me, the best kiss. Oops. Damn. <laughs> It's really hard for me to really think that that kind of stuff exists. And then I heard it in 1983, and that's There's when it evidence. made sense to me because <laughs> that's when people fell in love. So this last story is from Josh the Human on Instagram. This is a Valentine's Day one. I fell in love with coffee one night. I was stuck at a party and I didn't want to sleep with drunk people. What? If you didn't want to sleep with drunk people, why did you go to a party? He didn't want to stay there and fall asleep with the other drunk people. He wanted to go home to so drink coffee and fell in love with coffee. So okay, well, bring it over. I have a love-hate relationship with coffee. It makes me sweat, and it makes me hella anxious, and then it makes me shit myself. But! <laughs> It does give me the energy boost that I do need I to get up. through the day. But like immediately when I take a sip of coffee, I have to fart. <laughs> I'm gonna let it sink just like my poop. Wow. Right. That was lame. I need more. <laughs> well, that was the last story for this episode of Solo Cup Stories. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. You have been such a very interesting guest. How do you feel? Like, did I you have great, fun today? To be honest, yes, I had so much fun. Obviously, yes. not just because you and Izzy, like, are, we've been friends for so long, but yeah. also just because of the topics that were discussed, I feel like were really yeah. important. Um, <laughs> and especially, you know, Black History Month, because like oh, we yeah. said, I don't think it stops after February ends. I think it's something that we should embrace every day, all day, until mm -hmm. the day that I am no longer on this earth. You know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? We gotta live life to the fullest. I have to embrace right, my culture. And then as for the love stories, my right. dad's made me like, tear up a bit. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and share this video and subscribe to McLean Vlogs to see more. Make sure to follow Lexus on their social media. Their info is in the description below. Make sure to follow Andrew and Izzy, my co-producers, the camera lady and the bartender. Make sure to show them some love on social media as well. Their info is in the description below. Now, the next episode's theme is two themes, just like this episode. So just like this was Black History Month and Valentine's Day, the next theme is women Women's History Month and St. Patty's Day. So we're gonna just be having history quotes and lessons and stories and statements for all of my fellow ladies to share about Women's History Month and about why it's so important to be a woman in this day and age. And you know, St. Patty's Day kind of speaks for itself if you have any interesting, weird, funny, awkward, drunk stories to tell, drunk adventures to tell, go ahead and submit your story. Remember, you can submit your story by clicking the story submission link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. To stay updated, hit that notification bell and subscribe to McLean Vlogs. That way you know when new episodes are out and follow me on social media to continue to be in the loop with McLean Vlogs. Right over there, you can watch a video that YouTube suggests for you to watch Which next. Which you shouldn't do. Don't do that. Right? Right in front of me is the entire playlist of Solo Cup Stories. Yeah. So definitely like watch do that one. previous episodes of Solo Cup Stories. And in the middle of the screen, you see that beautiful face. Also Go ahead and click it so that you can subscribe to McLean Vlogs. You won't be disappointed, I already did it. I'm a huge fan, to be Support honest. your favorite black yes. creator. Mm, my only favorite black creator. <laughs> oh. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Peace out. Bye. See you next time. Great.